tight it because um, there is a level of unity amongst us and a lot of us know each other. Like the brother that just went into the museum, uh, we used to perform together back in high school. We've been on some of the same stages and we've been in this movement to teach our people the music. So it is tight knit. We have a, you know. Did you go to school in this area? No. Oh. And why did you say resilient? Resilient because of the survival through violence and past violence. You know, this neighborhood had a bomb dropped. This neighborhood had a bomb dropped on it in 1985, and prior to that, in 1977, it was a uh, it was a heavy attack by the police on the people. And in 1985, we're talking to move. We're talking about uh, 1985, a bomb being dropped on. This, uh, on this neighborhood, on this part of the city, West Philadelphia. And besides the violence that ha that's happening now, the heavy gun violence on young people and older people now, people in general, but the amount of gun violence that that is present, but yet so many productive people are here, surviving through it, and children mainly. I have to mention that as a teacher. Yeah, so I'm gonna speak a little bit about you being a teacher, but It's the access to weapons. Uh, that's one. Um, the the access to weapons is, is, is one of the major parts. Um, the other one is um, a lack of conflict resolution education, um, cultural education, spiritual education, cultivation, and having pe uh, creating safe space for people to develop and learn how to do with negative situations that can become very, very uh, hot. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know you would like that. Thanks so much, Levi. Yes, yes. You, you got, you know how to contact me. Yeah. All right, peace. <laughs> peace. You want to take some practice? Speaking about uh, teaching you as a right. teacher, tell me a little bit about uh, how do you teach me for you in school, or is that the... Oh, I, I, I don't know. Right now, because I'm a far, I have a background in environmental science and education. Um, I studied at Community College, Philadelphia, and I worked in the schools for about 25 years, all the different types of schools, as well as a CSS worker. So um, I use music, art, and science. So right now, I've been rebuilding the farm, and it's been productive. So I use the, the, the outdoors to teach children, you know, connect them to the food that they eat and the, thing, the things they like. That's my way of, of, of educating the youth through the, through the farm you know, a science aspect. And uh, with music is just, you know, having an outlet and being able to feel good. Where is Mill Creek Farm located? 4900 block of Brown Street or 4901 Brown Street. And there's people right there. Right now there's an actual um, farmer's market going on right now. And this is from the, the produce that you- that We you grow, grow, all the farm, yes. And what is some of the produce that you have here? We have uh, right now, we have tomatoes, we got chard, we have watermelons growing, we have peppers growing. I'm not, this is all from the chili peppers. Wow. Uh, many of things. So the, the farm is transforming as, as we're getting ready for fall, uh, for the fall season. So I'm starting to amend the beds and get ready for the fall crop coming do you, in. Do you know what was on that land before? The it was the high rise <laughs> buildings. It was so buildings, it was compartments and community. And it was a street actually where the alleyway is now on that in that area. There was a street that ran through the, that whole area. It was a street that ran through there. The street is no longer. No, it's now it's now residential. What was the street? Uh, Funston Street. Okay, okay, so that's a street that has disappeared. Right. Well, it's no. They they took it one. I think they took it one block over. Uh, but originally, that long ago, about we talking about 50, 60 years ago, probably, mm -hmm. uh, maybe even more. That's where um, that that where now there's houses in an alleyway. That was a actual street, wow. and the actual farm area was a was high rises in residential. And even where the community the community's been farming there and growing there for about 36 years, 40 years, as what I've heard, and that's just on the community side. But a lot of that was all residential. Wow.
that's good information uh -huh. to, to know. Um, do you know any historical facts or stories about the area in which you live around here? Any historical? Wow, or? that's a good good answer. A good question. Um, whew, there's so much. Um, Just pick one. <laughs> <laughs> um, you got the Belmont Mansion. Okay, so what about the Belmont? Well, the, the, the Belmont, the Belmont Mansion was connected to the Underground Railroad. Um, you have so much, man. You have the Nation of Islam in this area. That uh, this is one of the first areas where the Nation of Islam started. And uh, originally, before West Philadelphia, it was uh, North Philadelphia. Nation of Islam had its early beginnings uh, as far as Nation of Islam in Philadelphia, North Philadelphia, and West Philadelphia, in this very block. Wow. Um, so, uh, uh, man, we'll be here for a minute. There's so much stuff here. Um, some of the greatest actors and teachers came from uh, West Philadelphia. And do you know one of the actors or teachers that uh, from here? I uh, uh, can't remember. Her son is over a couple blocks over, but she uh, she went to one of the art schools okay. in here in the city. Okay. So, um, yeah. Was she a singer or an artist? She was an artist, okay. painter. painter. So, yeah, let me see who else I can uh, bring out of my hat with um, West Philadelphia. West Philadelphia got so much, it's, it's like. And across this Lancaster Avenue, Lincoln Highway, this whole area is connected um, to a Freedom Home Highway, an uh, abolitionist. Tell us a little bit about Lincoln Highway. What did you know about Lincoln Highway? Um, well, I can tell you about the Lancaster. The Lancasters was a family. Um, one of the families that actually came to own land in, in America and in this area. You had the Yorks and the Lancasters. That's where the names come from. Mm -hmm. So um, and Philadelphia is one of the first places where they fought against slavery. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people are connected to the Amish and the Quakers. Mm -hmm. And a lot of those groups of people were the first to fight against slavery. So Lancaster Avenue has its connections to a lot of the, I I I the Amish Quakers. And this being one of those original routes that was used in the city to transport from one area to another, particularly abolitionists. Nice. That's, that's that Belmont Mansion uh, connection again. Awesome. The, the parks in Philadelphia and West Philadelphia really show the history. Yes. And you kind of spoke to this already, but what makes a strong community, or do you, what makes a strong community, and do you believe you live in a strong community? You kind of spoke to that. Oh, wow. Well, I think what makes a strong community is um, people utilizing their resources together and uh, looking out for the children. Uh, community, when it protects its children, that's when you know it's at its strongest, and when it, when it works to provide for itself. But mainly children's safety, I think, is the, is the ultimate sign of a um, strong community and resources, how, how people come together to help each other. This very moment right here. Yeah. Do you believe that you live in a strong community? Sure. I, I, believe, I believe that I live in a strong community um, that needs healing. It's very resilient, but it needs healing. It needs healing, and it needs, um, we need direction. And it's, it's happening. I think the tighter we all become, the greater it becomes. And here's the last question I have for you. What changes have you seen, encountered, or heard about on Lancaster Avenue over the years? Um, one of the changes is um, the business districts. Uh, more people getting involved in starting businesses or in getting involved in land ownership. Um, I think that's one of the things I love. And also uh, seeing more of us getting involved in um, food security. Uh, one of the things that I like about Lancaster Avenue is that almost all the businesses are, are connected in helping the people have resources connected to food security. That's one of the things I love. And I'm a part of it. I've helped with it. I'm actually one of the main architects of food security in West Philadelphia right now. So um, I think that's one of the beautiful things, and the arts, seeing the arts actually start to flourish. I think those two things, it's is, is a, is a beauty to, to, to witness that, and to see us taking the land, taking the spaces we, we occupy and owning them, controlling them and utilizing them for cultivation. This, this museum is, is one, one example. Um, across the street is one example. 
Um, also, all the different organizations that pass out food and have activities for the people. That's a sign of, uh, of the tightness. And I think it can get even more tighter, especially if they all start putting out the same message at the same time, unrelentlessly. Get, how does everyone get on message, the same message? I think that's just a matter of being involved. I think if you, know, you, see, you see somebody else, yeah. You see, if, if you see somebody in, into what you're into, connecting with them. And, 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 and staying connected either through what you guys do or the particular spaces y'all like to frequent. I think that's the key. Awesome. That's the key. Thank you so much for sharing.